Jim, this next question, possibly our final one. We'll see how it goes. Sent to corny drive through at gmail.com from Mackenzie Wilno. My Will, question. Will, Willie? Mackenzie Wilno. That's what I'm at. Will Mackenzie know? My question for you is what are your. Th- <laughs> Sometimes you say something so dumb it cracks me up. Well, I can't just, even read. Just it. asking you. My question for you is. What are your thoughts on Rick the Model Martell? He was always one of my favorites, and I feel that he is underappreciated when it comes to remembering great in-ring workers. Uh, Martell was, especially as a babyface, you know, a very good worker and a, and a, a you know, a top guy. He was. He also could heal because he had the French Canadian, you know, cockiness going on, and I mean the. <sighs> The model, that was what, that was late 80s WWF when people started getting, for that, what, seven, eight year period, everybody had a an occupation, model, <laughs> garbage man, plumber, whatever the case. And they didn't really focus on him or use him on top, but Vern had enough confidence in him, use him on top. Um, he, of course, was huge in Montreal with all, all the rest of the, the French Canadian guys, the Rougeaus and Bravo, and et cetera. Um, he was a great looking guy. He had good size. He was very good in the ring. It just, you know, it was his main run as a top guy came in the early eighties before a lot of home video and before word got out. And by the time he got to the WWF, he had, you know, one of those middle card gimmicks. Sure. He made good money there, but he had a middle card gimmick and wasn't really featured. And didn't he have, what did, um, well, he came what out of friend? tag teams. Well, that's that's true. They they used him as a tag team first up there before he was uh yeah before he was the model. Him and Zinc as the Can Ams. Okay, boy, that there you go. Him and him and Zinc. And then Zinc flamed out. Yeah. And they made it Strike Force, him and Tito Santana, and they were pretty popular. And then he turned on Tito against the Brain Busters at WrestleMania five. And then I believe it was somewhere after that in the summer, maybe he became the model. Yeah. And I mean, they were trying to push him as a heel and take off on the, you know, like I said, the obnoxious French Canadianness, but they didn't use him as a top guy. And that's where that first eighties run was beginning to cool off a little bit and he wasn't figured in. So now it's been 30 years and a lot of people just, you know, unless they're, they're really devoted Fans that search out YouTube stuff or go back to the territories, they don't see a lot of him. You don't bring him up anymore. I don't mean you. I mean the royal you. Nobody brings him up anymore. So it's one of those things. I'm sure they they still love him in Montreal. He was still really good in the ring into the late 90s. Yeah, I mean, he was always in shape and looked great and was a good worker. It just, you know... It just didn't didn't happen in a, a wide variety. When he was in the AWA on top, it was they had seen their better days. Yeah, plus and, by that point he had a bowl cut. And I don't care yeah. who you were. No top babyface <laughs> is getting over in nineteen eighty four with a bowl cut. Ah, <laughs> oh, he had some good covers of the wrestling news though. He was very <laughs> photogenic. 